Only, only one guy who can beat Alex, you know, in front of you. I didn't see this short guy. Bring him here. It's you? Yeah, of course. So we're about to see, so brother. I am the heat, go, 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 go. I am the heat, brother. Go, go, go. You think you beat him? Why? Why do you think you have a good style for him? Hmm. Make it happen. You born ready? Please, uh, please let me go to this fight. Maybe next year. And I'll show you. What if I told you this guy is undefeated and will most likely get a title shot in the next couple of years? Movsa Evloev is the featherweight contender that is undefeated and is honestly under the radar because of one simple thing. T7, all for your winner by unanimous decision. By you he does not finish his fights. Having all wins by unanimous decision in the UFC, it does kind of make sense why his popularity did not spike after leaving as the M1 champion just earlier. So is it a matter of time before he gets fraud checked, or is it a matter of time we see the true colors of Movsa in the main event fights in the future? This is Movsar's very first fight being recorded and it shows the beautiful 0-0 record on the screen like that. Movsar is definitely a wrestling specialist, but his stand-up game is still very good. Managing the distance perfectly for the solid leg kick and the stiff jab after. Oh, and that head movement. If this is your debut opponent, just walk out, bro. Just walk out. No shame in walking out half naked in a full stadium. Fight goes to the ground in the weirdest way possible. Yeah, may maybe this is really a debut fight. Fight continues longer, but it ends up with the back mount and finishes with the rear naked choke. This fight is the first of many because it ends in a decision. 30 seconds into the first round and the opponent goes for the takedown. Stupid idea, yes, I know. I was thinking the same thing too. Yep, against the cage, Ground and pounding. Fight goes back to the feet and Movsa goes for the duck feint to the spinning back fist to the south poor high roundhouse kick. None of it connected, but if anything, it scared the f out of the opponent. One thing you notice about Movsa's style is that he springs into something after the first punch. Either a jab or lead hook, he springs into a takedown or a rear hand. Really good way to test the waters for amateur fighters. I'm gonna be honest. Nothing else really happens for the rest of the fight, and Movsa wins by unanimous decision by being more dominant in the ground and feet. I couldn't get all of the footage for this fight, but it really was short anyway, ending within the first minute and 44 seconds. Movsa gets the back mount really quick and ends it with a rear naked choke, just like his debut fight. Not spoiling the upcoming fights, but he gets two more submission wins in his career, and... Yeah, you can already guess how those fights are gonna end. Two undefeated fighters with both 3-0 in their records. Russia does not mess around when it comes to competitive smashing. Movsa just makes it look easy by already sitting in the dominant position and moving slowly to the back mount. Our opponent is actually smart, most likely knowing this was gonna happen, and spikes himself to a reversal, gaining the top position and full guard. But one minute later, Movsa reverses the reversal and goes back into back mount. What the hell did I just say? <laughs> After a while, the opponent tries his best to do something, but ultimately gets caught in the rear naked choke. That's 4-0 now, with 3 ending with a finish. That's the most exciting stat I can say at this point of time. Movsar's first TKO win, and my goodness, this is... Not a good one. When I say it's not a good one, it isn't me saying that. I'm just reading the body language. This is his facial expression when the ref was pulling him out. Yep, in the first round, Movsa gets the back mount and punches him until he can't take it anymore. This is a next level fighter if he is getting bored of his undefeated record of 5-0. Movsa finally fights a true contender and veteran that I can actually pronounce the name of, Lee Morrison. This fight ends with a unanimous decision with Movsa doing what he does best and shutting down his opponent in the ground. This would make my commentary dry as f but it needs to be said again. He takes the back and controls him throughout the whole fight. There were some good attempts by Lee Morrison to get the advantage, but nah. This fight was for the interim M1 bantamweight title and Movsa wants to make the biggest statement to the world. I don't blame the opponent's game plan. While studying Movsa's past fights, they have all been dominant decisions, a TKO from Mount, and rear naked chokes from Mount. Safe to say, he plans to destroy his stamina and body on the feet to mitigate the Sambo power. Halfway into round 2, Movsa took advantage of that mindset and just rear kicks him in the head. 
our new interim champion. And he still looks bored. Movsa confirms he is the best fighter in M1 and achieves undisputed champion via unanimous decision. Defending and denying everything the opponent dishes out and basically half of the fight being in back mount. I guess with this style, you can't really fix what isn't broken. And for the super casuals, if there isn't a knockout or submission, then was it really a win? Well, good timing because this one is a win. Defended the belt with ease. Backpack style rear naked choke and the opponent appealed instantly because he didn't tap. Did you forget who you were fighting? This guy is undefeated and his only and every submission wins is by rear naked chokes. I don't think you're gonna get out of this one bro. Despite the misleading finisher of this fight, we gotta look and analyze Movsar's amazing ground game defense. He gets carried, then somehow turns into a sprawl and then somehow gets caught in a guillotine. Gets out and decides to knock out Rafael because why not? It's a simple one-two, basic textbook boxing. But if you are scared of the takedowns and the rear naked chokes, then it does kind of make sense to get knocked out by this. And if you aren't still convinced by this guy's chin, I don't even know what it's called. The, the ground game equivalent of chin, his neck. Yeah, th this guy has a good neck. Now you are probably wondering, this guy should be famous as heck right now. Any undefeated active fighter in the UFC should be in the spotlight as they will, you know, most likely be the champion at some point. Unfortunately, all of Movsar's fights from now on becomes a decision fight. Although with amazing highlights and still a strong contender washing through the cans, it sets a strong foundation that fans and the UFC prefer exciting fights rather than the best fights. Song Wu Choi, decision win. Enrique Balzola, decision win. Mike Grundy, decision win. Nick Lenz, decision win. Hakeem Dawudu, decision win. Dang Igi, decision win. Diego Lopez, decision win. The thing is, he is also a very nice guy. He doesn't get the Bala Muhammad treatment, but in the eyes of UFC, that can be considered a worse thing. He is so under the radar, he doesn't even get noticed to be boring. That's how boring he is in terms of compatibility with the UFC. So boring decision fighters don't get the spectacle, despite the interesting matchups that could take over the champion. So if Movsar doesn't win his title shot, does that mean he will never get one again? Maybe before his title shot, he gets an exciting finish that really unravels his true strengths alongside the deserved hype. Who knows?